Hello guys, I hope that uh, somebody might be able to see and hear me already. I seem to have a description of the... Hello, hi guys. Hello everybody. Um, I seem to have a description of my tour on the... Uh, screen but I'm not sure why that's never appeared before on Streamlabs and I don't know how to get rid of it so I hope it's not appearing on any of your screens because I have no idea how to get rid of it that's okay then I mean it's like of all the people who shouldn't need a description of the trip it's me you know, I ought to know above all of the people where we're going, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's a, if, uh, if I need to read the description, I think something's gone wrong somewhere. But anyway, a big, big, big hello to everybody this afternoon. I am absolutely delighted to see you all and um, to uh, be here with you in Chipping Camden or just on the edge of Chipping Camden. Uh, Elizabeth, I have a description of the tour <laughs> in the middle of my screen, just as kind of imposed on the background. So, uh, it knows I'm getting older, does it? Yeah. I'm, well, in that case, it should also know that I've I've got no chance of reading white text against a cloudy background. <laughs> I have to kind of move it so it's not... Well, look, I can see where I'm going. It doesn't matter. So as long as you can see what, what's on the screen without worrying about... Um, at the moment, it's covering my forehead and the top of my nose. So uh, that's OK. Exactly, Elizabeth. You know, if the person who's streaming can't remember what, the, what they're streaming, I think there's a poor tale. So uh, hello to all of you. Hello to uh, everyone who's here. Um, my, well, it's been doing a lot of updates recently, so it could be something to do with that. But uh, I don't, I don't, I, I think the, the place to play around with it uh, is at home when I'm not live streaming. As long as you can see me without any kind of writing on the screen, apart from your chat, uh, then that's, uh, I'm going to go with that, because uh, I don't care, because I can just kind of look and see. I don't need to look at the screen, really. So, um, an all-girl band, unless some men are lurking. Lurking anymore? <laughs> I tell you what, I'll be sinking. I don't know about lurking. I'm standing in a muddy, uh, on a rather muddy spot at the moment, but, uh, and it's getting muddier because it's raining, but, well, I'm not sure if it's actually currently raining or just dripping from the trees that I'm, um, I mean, when there's no leaves on them, it's hard to say sheltering under them, but <laughs> I'm kind of, you know, staying a little bit out. No, it's definitely, it is, is raining because I can see it on the other side of the road. Never mind. Your two dogs are watching, they're male. They are. And we just saw a chap walking two dogs that were trying to get fuss as we were walking through the town a little while ago. Yeah, David is definitely lurking. Well, I don't know. Da da no, I've met David a few times. He's not a lurker. He's definitely not a lurker. <laughs> a big hello to David and uh, hello to everyone. And uh, if, it's, if it's just you, me and Emma's dogs keeping up the... Uh, Keeping up the uh, fly in the flag for the uh, male of the species, then that's okay. I'll tell you what I do need to do before I start. And that is turn my phone to silent, my other phone, in case I get anybody trying to phone me. Now, now here's one of the things I found strange about um, modern phones uh, I don't know if anybody else notices this when when you try to if you've if your phone was locked like the screen and then you try to switch it off you have to 
put your password in to switch off your phone. I mean, surely your password is to prevent people doing un unauthorized things with your phone. So if it's switched off, they can't do that anyway. I don't know. I don't design phones. If I did, they'd be a lot more user friendly, maybe. As long as the user was me. <laughs> Well, it is... Oh, Mark, here's another gentleman to add to our small but growing collection. Look at that. So, um, a big warm welcome to you in a somewhat rainy and cloudy Chipping Camden this afternoon. But I'm delighted to um, have you all joining me this afternoon. And um, I'm pleased to be here. It didn't look for a little while as though that was going to be possible. I got stuck in Germany for... 24 hours longer than planned due to uh, industrial action and even then um, my flight out of Berlin last night uh, it looked like it was going to be uh, delayed sufficiently that I'd have missed my connection to Birmingham and had to stay another night but I don't know I'm here I got home at about just before midnight, midnight last night um, after a few days away on a very lovely tour uh, in Berlin and, um, but I'm delighted to be back here with you today for the first of our two tours, one live and one as live, which means I only have to get wet once. I'm standing by the road at the moment um, and for a good reason, as you'll see, um, but we won't be in such a noisy spot for uh, the entirety of the tour. And uh, this is, of course, one of our sponsored tours. So a big, big thank you to anyone who contributed towards the fund uh, to uh, enable us to do this tour and to make it free for everyone to join. It's been a long time since I've done a live stream with you in the Cotswolds, I think, and even longer since we've been in Chipping Camden. So it's lovely to be back. And, um, you know, whenever we talk about the Cotswolds, um, we, we talk about a few characteristic things that, that we're going to see uh, pretty soon. Um, and... What I wanted to do today really was to revisit a few of the most sort of picturesque and best known spots in Chipping Camden. But I also wanted to take a little look behind the scenes, so to speak, because what we, um, what we can see then, you know, we tend to look at the manor house, the church, the most sort of historic buildings in the town centre. We see tea rooms, we see nice gift shops, um, but we really get a chance to look where some of the people live who actually um, are part of these communities. And I thought we could do a little bit of that today as well. So um, without further ado, I hope that this button still works. And this is where I am standing. So, you know, when we talk about the Cotswolds, and the typical features. We talk about green, traditional English countryside. Mm, got a bit of that here. It should be even greener with all this rain that's falling. We talk about golden colored limestone and we've got one of the old dry stone walls here made of that. And we talk about the, the area's history of sheep farming and the wool that made it one of the richest areas in Europe in the medieval period. So. We've got a bit of everything here. Although I have to say these are not the authentic sheep. I mean, I don't mean they're not the actual ones. Obviously, they're not the actual ones. But um, the sheep that were the source of the wool that made the Cotswold so wealthy hundreds of years ago were a particular breed known as the Cotswold lions. Um, the Cotswold lions, you don't really see them on active farms anymore because um, they're, they're no longer um, economically significant. Um, they were saved from possible extinction about 130 years ago by enthusiasts. And um, they exist now as a historic breed, as a sort of a rare breed. Um, and, and you can see them in certain spots, but, but these are more modern breeds of sheep that are currently being farmed in the... Uh, in the fields around here and we're looking out across the field of sheep towards a couple of buildings that formed part of a very grand complex that was called Camden House and Camden House was a, a beautiful large mansion house uh, built in the early 17th century uh, but it only stood for around 30 years uh, because um, it was uh, 
In the possession of a strongly royalist supporting family during the English Civil War, and um, when it looked likely that the parliamentarian army was going to seize it, um, they withdrew the troops that were garrisoning the house and they burnt it down to prevent it falling into the hands of the uh, enemy. So all we see today are some of the kind of the outbuildings, if you like, of Camden House. Uh, and the one that's in the best state of repair is the one directly across the field from us. Uh, and that was called the Banqueting House. Now these days we think of a banquet as being a big feast, but the original meaning of a banquet was uh, kind of, if you held a big feast or a party at one of these mansion houses, everybody would have the dinner and maybe a bit of entertainment, a bit of dancing, and then all but your closest friends and family would kind of leave, and then you would adjourn to a special little more intimate space to have some little sweet drinks and um, treats and those kinds of things and that was originally what a banquet was uh, and that's what the banqueting house was so it was actually separate from the main mansion house uh, which is why it survived the fire where many other parts of the, the building did not and uh, these days it is um, one of a couple of the buildings remaining at Camden House that you can rent uh, as holiday accommodation. Um, the other one being the gatehouse, which we'll see in a little while. Oh, we're definitely getting towards spring. We're going to see quite a lot of daffodils on today's tour and some nice blossoms in the trees as well. And plenty of sheep here looking, giving us strange looks. <laughs> Not got these, these can't see any lambs in these fields. We did see some when we were driving down here this morning um, on the way down through Warwickshire. We did see uh, some of the sheep, some of the sheep, some of the sheep had lambs with them. And um, so, quite early in the year, really, for the lambs, I think, but some of them already had some lambs. Them, but not the ones here. So we're on the we're on the edge of the town really and Chipping Camden is a town of about 4,000 people these days so it is quite a thriving community. It doesn't have a whole load of commercial facilities, it doesn't have any large shops, a supermarket, a petrol station, anything like that. It has the local shops um, but it does have sort of quite active uh, community groups uh, in, and it does have um, both primary and secondary schools which are central schools for kids to come to from the surrounding rural areas um, and uh, so it is it is kind of quite a thriving community and we are just on the edge of the center of the town where we find the churchyard as we, we could see a little bit a moment ago and we're, we're just heading along the side of the churchyard and we're going to see the church very very shortly. St James's Church is the name of the church in, in Chipping Camden here and it's one of the, the very grand Cotswold churches uh, and they are given the sort of general title wool churches uh, because it was the wealth of the wool trade and the wool merchants who came from these villages and endowed these amazing churches and paid for some of the artworks within them. Thanks to see you later. And you really see, you know, this is not a size of and grandeur of church that you would associate with a small little town like this one. You know, you would expect something of this size in a, in a big city. It's almost a cathedral-like church in terms of its scale and um, the quality of the, the architecture. Um, St. James's dates back in the form we see today to around the 15th century. And uh, it's very much built in the prevailing style at that time, which was called uh, Perpendicular Gothic and uh, so it's it's kind of modeled a little bit on uh, Gloucester Cathedral so we're in the county of Gloucestershire the uh, 
bishop who was uh, in charge of this area, the Bishop of Gloucester, and um, so the tower was kind of based in its design on the, the tower of uh, St. Peter's, which is Gloucester Cathedral. And the very wealthy wool merchants of Chipping Camden, it was their money that, that paid for, for the, the construction and expansion of this church and for some of the elaborate artworks inside, including some of the beautiful tombs of, of some of those wool merchants and their families. And you have to remember, you know, that these guys, despite being wool merchants and living in a, what is now a rural area, um, they were some of the wealthiest and most influential people in the entire kingdom of England at that time. If the king needed finance, where would he go to? He would go to wool merchants and uh, similar sort of wealthy business people to, to get money, to get loans. Or maybe he might uh, give them titles uh, in return for some uh, financial consideration. Not that that kind of thing would ever happen these days, of course. But, uh, you know, these were really important guys. Now, this particular building we can see in front of us, it's currently under redevelopment, uh, I suspect. I'm not sure. There's two possibilities because it's not being divided into apartments. So the two possibilities would either be a hotel or a residential care facility. I'm not sure which at this stage. But this is originally where uh, the priest would have lived. So this was the rectory. So whoever was the priest of St. James's, you know, he lives, well, directly opposite. He's not got a very long commute and he's, he's got his own little gate right there. Look, he can go straight up uh, and into up the pathway. He doesn't even need to go in the main door of the church. He can go straight up there into the vestry uh, and prepare himself for the religious services that he's taking. So, you know, everything is the golden limestone that underlies the entire Cotswold area and all of the hills around here are limestone hills and there are many, many quarries uh, ooh, around here in the hills. I don't know if anything went wrong for you there, but it did for me. Now I'm going to, the rain is getting a little bit heavier, so I am going to attempt to, I'm not going to, I'm going to attempt to do something very difficult. I'm not going to command it to stop, I'm not quite that difficult, but something nearly as difficult, which is putting up an umbrella with one hand. No, oh, we've done it, I've done it. Um, I don't care if I get wet, I'm just worried about the, the equipment, but I'm going to switch over hands because my gimbal is much more comfortable in my right hand. There we go, so at least I can keep the, keep the gimbal dry. Now we're really kind of in a spot that shows the two sources of power and influence in the uh, history of this town and many others. Another grand house here under redevelopment, look at that. Isn't that looking beautiful? They've cleaned up the stonework, they've replaced some of the stones with modern ones. And they're in the process of, of modernising. Fantastic. So the twin sources of power and influence and money, you've got the gatehouse to Camden House with the two gatehouse lodgers, one on either side. Um, like I say, they are both available to rent as a holiday accommodation by an organisation called the Landmark Trust. And um, the church, so we get another great view of St. James's from here. And you can see, you know, the manor house, you've got the secular authority, the mansion house, and then you've got the, the church, which was uh, very influential over life at that time. Beautiful. And one of the best spots for daffodils. Always, every year, you get a lovely, a lovely display of daffodils here by the gatehouse, aren't they beautiful? Mother's Day today here in England, so 
very very apt that we am showing you some daffodils they were my mum's favorite and uh, when we were kids uh, the church service for mother's day you always had to go at the, the front and get a little like a uh, little bunch of daffodils to to give to uh, your mother and they were distributed also to to any of the the ladies of the of the congregation who who didn't have their own children there to to collect them so in one of the outbuildings of the mansion house the barn this is court barn uh, this is a, a museum it's a museum of craft and design uh, based upon the work here in chipping camden of um, a group of traditionally um, focused craftspeople. They were originally operating in the east of London, but uh, they decided that they wanted to get out of the big city and move to somewhere where practicing traditional crafts would be a little bit more authentic. Uh, and under the leadership of a chap by the name of C.R. Ashby, they, they came here from the east end of London and set up the Guild of Handicraft here in in Camden and um, this is uh, a museum dedicated to historic crafts and also the crafts that are still being produced and made by artisans in and around the town. So we've got an ingenious little, uh, little uh, thing ahead of us which is um, a wheel wash so if you are coming to visit the mansion house in your nice coach you've been traveling on the muddy roads and you don't want to uh, go and um, make a bad impression so you will drive your coach through the wheel wash down here and um, you will get that mud and dirt and who knows what else um, off the wheels of your coach quite a rare thing they're not many of they're not something that you see a whole lot i only know of a of a couple of them that uh, that survive but that's uh, i think that's pretty cool now the mansion house um camden house was built um by a man called baptist hicks in the early 17th century and he was based in london really and he was a a big friend and financier of uh, king james the first and um, his son, like the subsequent Charles I, and he was given the title of Baron Camden and built uh, a new mansion house here. But as well as being a very wealthy man, a very influential man politically uh, in the London in London society, uh, he was also a philanthropist, and he was determined that the um, town of Chipping Camden, of which he was now the lord of the manor, would um, thrive, and the people would do as well as possible under his stewardship uh, and part of what he did was to build these beautiful almshouses um, and uh, as we see we see almshouses a lot of my tours and they're very quite a common feature of historic places in England where the um, almshouses built to house poor or retired people of the parish at the uh, and provided by the uh, lord of the manor uh, and they are still retirement cottages to this day. Now, one of the interesting things is that in the early 17th century, you know, most people did not have access really to a consistent supply of clean drinking water. Um, but actually, out of all of the people in Chipping Camden, the people who were requiring accommodation in the almshouses, they had the best water because they had a well here. And that was connected up to the water supply at the mansion house. So the Lord of the Manor, his family and his guests and retainers had the healthiest water and they were sharing it by connecting the, the conduit here and um, providing fresh drinking water, clean drinking water to the people in the almshouses. Of course, they now have mains water, so they use this just as a, the old well, just as a place to have flowers and plants. So Baptist Hicks was, uh, you know, a really important guy and, and um, he, he died. He didn't get to live in Camden House for very long at all.
because uh, he died in, in 1629, just a few years after it had actually been completed. Uh, he didn't have any surviving sons, uh, and so the house passed to his daughter um, and uh, her husband. Her husband um, was a member of the Knoll family, N-O-E-L, Knoll family, uh, quite a, a wealthy and influential family around these parts. Uh, and her name was uh, Lady Juliana Knoll. Uh, and um, they took on the house, but then, uh, as I mentioned, it was burned to prevent it falling into the hands of the parliamentarians during the Civil War. And we get a great view back from here of the almshouses, of the outer walls of Camden House, the Gatehouse and St. James's Church. Now this is where we're going to go a little bit off the beaten track. We're not going to head straight down into the centre of the town as we might normally do. And what we're going to do is go and see a little bit of a different side of Chipping Camden by heading up this road which is called Calf Lane. And uh, one of the things you, we, we're going to see by taking a little step off the main street is that we're going to see houses that are thatched. A very traditional material for making a roof uh, here in England, but in the Cotswolds you don't see so much thatch. Um, that's because the limestone that you use for the walls and the floors you can also use for making uh, roof tiles. But also it's because of regulations. So in many towns, uh, because of a risk of fire, they um, did not allow thatched um, roofs to be used and so gradually people replaced them. Um, in the Cotswolds it wasn't such an issue because the houses were made of stone rather than timber. But, but even so you don't see thatched roofs in the centre of the town along the main street where the markets were. Um, what you do see is a little bit outside of the town. You'll see some of the thatched cottages. So we're walking kind of parallel to the main street. <laughs> Absolutely clear. I think uh, your dad and, and generations of, of firefighters um, before him um, were very influential in, uh, I think the only, I think the only people who liked them were the people who got paid to rebuild the houses after the fires. <laughs> So I want to talk a little, little bit about the, the name of, of this town, Chipping Camden. Uh, originally it was just called Camden, uh, and Camden relates to an old word for stream, uh, so like uh, the river Cam in Cambridge, um, and there's a little uh, river here called, that was called the Cam, and um, so that was the, uh, it was the settlement on the Cam, and, but Camden, you know, it's sort of a quite generic kind of um, name really and you need to differentiate and the important thing about Chipping Camden was that in the 12th century it had a market charter so it was able to hold weekly markets uh, and became a major market centre not just for the wool that was being produced in the Cotswolds but for all the other kind of agricultural produce local goods uh, and that is why it gets this name Chipping, because that comes from an old English word for market. So it's why you get, you get a number of, um, there's a number of English towns with Chipping in the title. There's Chipping Norton, which is also in the Cotswolds. There's Chipping Sodbury, there's Chipping Ongar. It's also where we get the word cheap. So if something's cheap, it's a good bargain. Um, but originally uh, that comes from exactly the same route that meant a market. So in London, for example, in the city of London, near St Paul's Cathedral, one of the main streets in the modern city is called Cheapside. And it's nothing to do with it being down market. Uh, that was because it was one of the main market streets. Um, so it comes from the same word that we get chipping, we get cheap. So all of those things come from the same linguistic roots. Chipping Barnet near you, Leslie. Oh, I've not heard of that one. Susan, I don't know if there's anyone... Oh, I don't know whether you mean anyone called Thatcher living in Chipping Camden or uh, whether in the, in the group <laughs> watching the tour. I don't know in either case. 
it's quite a yeah. so what we see as we start to come down into the more residential side we're going to be walking through some of the streets where your average residents of Chipping Camden live because of course your average people who live here they don't live at the tea rooms, they don't live at the church or the market hall or the, the places we usually show people on tours. They live in houses that are away from the centre. Ah, part of Barnet where the Battle of Barnet took place. Oh, okay, Leslie, I know, yeah, I know Barnet in that sense, but that would be Barnet Fair as well, would it? Because you know, really linked to the, the market traditions there. And here in Chipping Camden as well. difference of some of the types of buildings you get some historic ones and you get modern ones but the important thing is the planning rules here are very strict so you do have to use materials that uh, fit in with the uh, prevailing style of the area so you do have to use golden limestone it doesn't have to be local it's not the not much of the high quality building stone in the active quarries around here we have strict planning regulations because it is an area that has a conservation status so they're very keen to uh, to keep the um you're right emma william and I It's not a hardship to use, apart from until you have to buy it. Uh, and, it, you know, it is, it is a problem because, obviously, um, I think I would say that... Um, this would be interesting. A tree like a mushroom here, very, very nicely cut into shape. I think the problem would come when you um, need to repair anything. You know, if you want to build a new garage or you you need to replace your front wall or you know any you want to add an, an extension because you have to use certain kinds of materials and it has to be very uh, strictly approved um, and because you have to use those expensive materials it's a place where you you don't really buy a property that's right at the limit of your budget you have to have a little bit of uh, a bit of leeway so that if any work needs doing or you know you you can do it so this is the cam this is the stream that gives the town part of its name it did originally flow closer to the main street uh, but it was kind of diverted uh, so that it so that the markets could expand but the reason that the main street of chipping camden is kind of a, a semi-circular shape sort of this sort of arched shape is because it followed the uh, line of the river where it originally was. Oh, they have very tantalising names of some of the streets, the modern streets here. Badgers Field. I wonder if they, they probably do get badgers on the fields, but not in the houses. But what you can see here, these are modern houses, but they have the same golden stone look about them i mean they do look very very bright the modern ones because they're not weathered you know you can tell that they've not had like 400 years of weathering but you know these are all modern developments here and uh, this road is called lady juliana's view uh, and that relates to the daughter of sir baptist hicks who uh, inherited the uh, mansion house with her with her husband um, and um, so she when they um, burned the house and withdrew the troops she stayed on living in a little cottage on the edge of the estate uh, up here on the hillside overlooking the uh, the mansion house and um, so that's why this street is called Lady Juliana's view there's part of that uh, cottage sort of a wall that's and a gateway that still remains that's uh, called Lady Juliana's Gateway. Mark, yes, the, the cam does flood. Um, and um, here it's, it was in quite a deep gully, but um, 
there's a section where it's closer to the buildings on the main street. It runs just behind the main the buildings and they do have quite regular issues there with, with flooding. So yes, I think they do have an issue with that. But what I what I like about coming into the more residential sections is that we you know you, you could be anywhere in terms of the style of the buildings. You know, it's a nice residential area. You could be in pretty much any town in England. But for the fact that everything is made of this golden stone. <laughs> and uh, that is uh, something that's quite distinctive about the Cotswolds. And I did say that they had a... Um, they had several schools here. Uh, they do have a large secondary school and the weekend is a nice time to be here. The coffee shops are busier, the tea rooms, the shops, but school days are really busy in Chipping Camden. So at the start and end of school time, there are buses that you know are taking the kids back to all the surrounding little villages and parents coming to pick them up. It's a real sort of traffic chaos around the big secondary school, which is near the church. They've also got a couple of primary schools as well, including this one, which is the Church of England Primary School, St. James. Uh, and that is serving originally the um, St. James and Ebrington Church of England Primary School. Now, Ebrington is a village about uh, three miles away from Chipping Camden, but um, we may call it Ebrington, but the locals don't. It's spelt Ebrington but the locals call it Yibberton. For some reason, the locals call it Yibberton. And uh, the residents of Yibberton, um, you know, no matter where you come from in the world, there are always somebody that you make jokes about and their level of intelligence and their level of sophistication. Uh, and, you know, so whether, you know, in, in the UK for many, many years, Comedians would tell jokes about the Irish. The Irish would tell jokes about the people from one particular county of Ireland and so on and so forth. And in the Cotswolds, the people would make jokes about the residents of Yeburton, um, who were kind of the butt of all of the local jokes. I don't know why, but you have to find someone, don't you? <laughs> Everyone has to find someone to make jokes about. And for them, it was the people of Yubruton. Oh, and I mentioned it's school on a Sunday. But you didn't have to go there. I thought you were going to say uh, mentioning a Church of England school would be... <laughs> oh, there's my umbrella. It's not blown away, I just dropped it. They couldn't correctly pronounce the name of their village. I know, that's right, you've returned. And somebody who lives in one of these houses has a wood-burning stove, because I can smell it. They smell lovely, very, very traditional. But, you know, this is, these are the places where people are paying the, the serious money for for property to live out here in the Cotswolds. Have lovely gardens and got a couple of lovely blossom trees, but we're also going to see some more beautiful thatch as we, uh, we come back onto the main road here. We've sort of cut through from the main road by the church. And then we're going to head back up into the centre of town. You know, a lot of people who live here, they obviously, they, they, if they are of working age, they don't work in Chipping Camden. Um, they will most likely be commuting um, possibly to Gloucester, to Cheltenham, um, 
there's quite a lot of business in Warwick and Stratford. They might be commuting down to Oxford. So, you know, people will be commuting, possible even to commute to London from here because uh, you can drive a few miles down the road to a place called Morton in Marsh, where there's a, at least twice an hour, there's a direct train into London, Paddington, an intercity train service. So people would commute from here to London as well. Now I did spot this when I was walking by earlier, which I like. Somebody's chopped down one of the trees and you, quite recently. But uh, I do like what they've left as a little message there. Axe man. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to hang around too long in case the axe man is still lurking somewhere. But um, turns in, yeah, def rain in here. It's it's one of these irritating amounts of rain. You know, it's not really bad enough that you need to put a big coat on and take run for shelter. But it's sufficient that will uh, that my filming equipment doesn't like it and. It will my glasses. There's some more lovely displays of daffodils here on the and down the trees. Lovely. They've come all of a sudden as well. It seems like the last couple of weeks has really got to that. You know, there were one or two poking their heads up and even in the last week in, in the garden at home when I set off to go to Germany at the, beginning of, at the beginning of the week there were sort of just a few and I came come back and now there's quite a lot of the daffodils have, have come up so I did say we were going to see some of the biggest and most attractive thatch in the village of, or town of Chipping Camden and that is the uh, buildings we're going to come upon in a moment and again, if you have a thatched roof, then you need some, uh, some pretty deep pockets because uh, it is very expensive these days because, you know, it's not like back in the day when every house was had a thatched roof and the thatcher, every village had a thatcher. You know, these days there aren't many thatchers. It's a very skilled profession and it's very expensive, you know, and having a, a roof done on a uh, property of, of that size if you needed to replace the entire roof you'd probably be looking at something like thirty thousand pounds luckily you won't have to have that done you know all the time but uh, um, you know every every two to three decades so if you own the house for a lifetime you're probably going to have to have the the entire roof redone a couple of times in contrast to either the, uh, the stone tiles here, the limestone tiles, where some of those have been on the roofs for 500 years already, or modern tiles, you know, which are gonna last you a long, long, long time. It's another beautiful thatch cottage across the way here. A couple of them next to each other. Duh. really see it's beautiful and if you look up on the roof there's like a figure of a bird probably a, a pheasant I think um, and that would be just kind of a little it was kind of a tradition that the uh, particular thatchers who made them or sometimes it would be a local thing that they would have different kinds of little uh, sort of pictures animals and birds that they would use to uh, sign off the um, the work that they've done. A couple of uh, owls maybe on top of the one here. Let's see, yes, I, I've seen cats, I've seen squirrels, foxes, hares. Did actually the hare, I wouldn't be surprised to see a hare around here because they are they're, they're quite a common animal around here. You do often see hares. Uh, in the fields around this part of the world. In fact, I, I think probably I, out of the hares I've seen in my life, most of them have been around the Cotswolds. Here's another beautiful view of this cottage with the with the shaped hedges and the, the lovely... I 
you can. And a TV, they've got a TV aerial. Wow. I know that might not be as traditional as the thatching, but it, it seems almost as uh, incongruous these days. Yeah, thatch has gone green. It's been, it's been, it's well settled in that one. That's definitely not a, not a new, a new one. Another one just peeping over the top there. What have they got? Oh, they've got, they've got uh, pheasants as well. But that, that is, that could definitely be a local thing because certainly there are many, many, many pheasants <laughs> around this area as well. One of the most common types of wildlife that you see as you drive around the Cotswolds, pheasants. Hopefully you don't see them too closely when they run out of the bushes across the road. Hopefully you see them in plenty of time to uh, hit the brakes. Hello, I'm sure it's lovely to see you. And here we've got a couple of lovely blossom trees as well. And the thing I've noticed about the blossom this year is that it's getting a, it's getting a good sort of amount of time. Normally we always say whenever the blossom comes on our tree in our garden at home, we always say that we can pretty much guarantee that we're going to have a big storm, lots of wind, and all of that beautiful blossom is going to last three days and then it's going to be all over the lawn. But um, yeah, the, the beautiful blossoms are looking great. Let's go and, oh, let's go and get a lovely, yeah, lovely view of them here. Look at those. Aren't they lovely? Really coming into nice, nice flower at the moment. Cherry blossoms are lovely. Yeah, it's, it's not been that cold. It, it's been very wet lately, but it's actually, you know, February was quite a, a warm month, historically speaking. Very wet, but uh, the temperatures were, daytime temperatures were very good. So the blossoms and the, the daffodils are, have really been encouraged. Yeah, I see it is still quite early, you know, it's only, I don't know what date it is exactly. It's in March, 10th of March, is it? Something like that, which is quite early, but uh, we're having those out already is, is pretty good. So uh, this street that we are on now uh, is called Sheep Street and um, so you know it's most of the historic streets are a reference to what they might have been used for and um, this was certainly one of the areas where the livestock markets uh, would have been you know and Sheep Street uh, is showing where some of the uh, the wealth that Chipping Camden had and brought in was actually developed and where it was made. Oh, lovely. But we've got a really good example here. You've got a row of cottages, but you've got thatch on the one, and we're going to get a really lovely view. You can really see the, the material here, the reeds under there with the, these days, the metal mesh to keep it in place. But the reeds are looking good there. And uh, well, talk about district descriptive names. <laughs> Thatched cottage, it certainly is. So these will have, these date back probably around about 400 years, I would say, these particular cottages. And we can see thatch, but then next to it, you've got much more modern roof material. And uh, we'll probably see a couple of um, buildings with the really historic limestone tiles as well. Mitzi, absolutely, yes, the birds. Or, or they might even make nests under the, up under the eaves of, of the thatch as well. You know, they'll be making the nests in there. And of course you get the aspects of the modern world as well. Chinese takeaway, fish and chips. Are they open today? 
Oh, they are. They open at five. What time is it now? Quarter past four. Oh. <laughs> oh. Now, one of the uh, interesting things was that uh, Chipping Camden had been very successful for hundreds of years, uh, thanks to its markets and particularly its wool trade. Uh, but as the wool trade uh, declined, obviously um, the, the town was uh, going into a decline as well. And they, they tried to uh, kind of get into other areas of economic activity. And um, one of them was um, to make silk. Uh, and they were using the fast flowing water of the, the Cam stream um, to make silk and they created in the 18th century a silk mill and this is the silk mill here 18th century stone building and uh, you can see that they built it right over the uh, stream there uh, and used the water and uh, it it was um, lucrative, but it was never something that could be expanded to a scale that would be um, that would make the town sort of uh, move into more of the modern industrial world. Uh, it would provide some local employment, but but it would never enable Chipping Camden to become an industrial centre. And the mill uh, by the 18th, sorry, by the late 19th century was kind of derelict uh, and remember I mentioned the um, guild of handicraft that moved from um, East London with C.R. Ashby uh, to Chipping Camden they set up in there and they converted the mill into little workshops and gallery spaces and and all kinds of um, places for artisans to work absolutely triste yeah lots of big windows so anytime you're you're doing anything that delicate work you needed big windows uh, to let in all of the natural light. Um, and that would have been very useful for the uh, Guild of Handicraft as well when they came here because, um, you know, you would have had people making, making jewellery and very fine silverware and these kinds of things and pottery, decorative items um, where they would also need to be able to uh, see very clearly. Uh, and that's where they were based. And nowadays there, there are still some independent workshop spaces in there for local craftspeople. There's a, a gallery um, from, the, from the, the local craft guild. Uh, and uh, it really is quite a, um, quite a nice place, but not open on a Sunday. And I know from experience that I can't get a signal in there anyway. I think, generally speaking, the Cotswolds don't have a bad signal outside. As soon as you start stepping into some of these 500 year old stone houses with either a thick thatched or stone tiled roof, um, your signal pretty much just, um, no, nah, that's it. You're finished in terms of your streaming signal. <laughs> oh, a second hand bookshop. What have we got here? Look. No. Little children, that's what we want. That's the kind of what you want to see in a and then we've got one of the silversmithing companies, a Welsh a Welsh company, um, that is still based in Chipping Camden and have a very nice decorative silverware and glassware here. There's the name of the sheep, the street, sheep street, Chipping Camden. And we're back on the main street. And so as I said, the main street used to follow the stream. So you can see it curves around there and then it comes along here and then it, it meanders away around to the right. And on each side, you had quite a slope as the land was going down towards the stream. So the houses on, on one side are, are much higher than those on the other. But the street was rerouted in it, in it and this wide high street now was created hundreds of years ago to provide space for the thriving markets that were held here. And uh, you know, these days 
still a, a really beautiful place to stroll and uh, for the people who have their businesses here. It's one of the largest of the, the buildings in the central part of the town. It used to be an inn called the Green Dragon Inn, but it's look at the original stone windows frames. It's called Mullion House because you have the, the mullions are the stone framing of, of the windows. Find a tea room, Susan. Yeah, it'll probably be closed now. And they've all been very busy because it's Mother's Day. Lots of people have been having a little day out and treating their mother to afternoon tea and that kind of thing. So a lovely little building here where you have both stone and timber framing combined. So you're combining all, all kinds of different... Uh, it's now a holiday accommodation, Rosary Cottage. And Rosary Cottage, obviously, that suggests a link to um, Roman Catholicism, uh, and that would be very appropriate because um, on this site were discovered the remains of a medieval chapel. So the main church of St. James we saw, but there was also a chapel here right at the centre of the market, uh, and it was dedicated to St. Catherine, who was the patron saint of um, textile and wool workers. Um, so you find a lot of St. Catherine chapels and um, churches in the Cotswolds. The Roman Catholic Church from the 19th century uh, here in Chipping Camden is actually St. Catherine's as well. But that was where St. Catherine's Chapel used to be, which was kind of the little chapel uh, for religious observance right in the centre of the market. And that's why the house that was then built on the site of it was called Rosary Cottage. So right at the heart and there, there was a marketplace as well as the main street so the street itself would have had markets all the way along it <laughs> and uh, but you would here where you've now got a parking area you know you can this was this would have been kind of the, the market square and uh, the building at the center of it it's much later the building at the center of it is 19th century so when you had the medieval markets here, this would have been uh, open completely. Um, sort of as, as far as almost the trees that we can see there, this whole area right at the heart of the town would have been the open market square in the middle of Chipping Camden where all of the local produce, livestock and so on would have been traded. We had a beautiful house here called Cotswold House. That is a, a little hotel and restaurant. Very nice uh, terrace and garden, although not not today, <laughs> unless you want to sit in a pool of water, which would kind of, I think, detract from the experience somewhat. They're reusing much older stones, but the, um, this is the town hall. Uh, it was built in the 19th century, uh, and uh, there's been a, a school there, there's been, um, it's been a centre for local council meetings and for all kinds of events and uh, it's used today for for dancers for art classes and various things and there's a little market being in there today a little craft market within the town hall today i'm not going to go in and at the center of town as you might well imagine and in common with most most other villages and towns and cities the war memorial dedicated to uh, those from the town who lost their lives in the first and second world wars yeah the farmers market is coming soon in the summertime they they do have they do have some markets here in the summertime fruit markets and uh, local produce now talking of uh, markets and local produce one of the most iconic structures in Chipping Camden is the one that is right here in front of us uh, and this is the Chipping Camden Market Hall and right at the beginning we saw the ruins of Camden House and we saw the almshouses and I said that Baptist Hicks all his wealth was a philanthropist wanted to do right by the people of the town and uh, one of the things that he did was to build a new market hall 
out of stone. There had been a timber market hall here, but it, you know, timber um, doesn't, especially an open structure like this, it doesn't uh, necessarily last so well. Uh, and in the 1620s, he had this uh, replaced, timber one replaced with this brand new stone market hall. Uh, and it's where particularly the dairy produce would have been traded. You have the dairy produce, particularly in summertime, you don't want it to be in the direct sunlight. Uh, and you would be uh, having it in the Market Hall. And the Market Hall is beautifully preserved. It's in the care of the National Trust, was saved from demolition in the 20th century. And um, it's a, an absolute, it's a little thing, but it's an absolutely amazing place. And you can see the floor, look at the floor. That's all original, 1627. And it's been walked on and bashed with goods and carts and, and who knows what over the centuries that's original flooring stonework all original from almost 400 years ago and underneath we can see the wooden frame of the roof and then the stone tiles so this is the same limestone that's used for the walls and the floor they used to say about Cotswold limestone that you could do anything with Cotswold limestone except eat it. It's kind of a reference to its versatility, but I'm sure maybe the people of Uruton, maybe they tried to eat it. Maybe that's why they were known as being uh, the least intelligent of the Cotswold people. <laughs> I don't know. But this is an amazing example of 17th century stonework and preservation. And uh, they do hold markets here, sort of craft markets and things in the summertime as well. Uh, and it is amazing to, to have this preserved. Now we began next to Camden Hall when I said that they burnt it down. And one of the great things about the, I mean, obviously when they burned down Camden Hall, uh, Camden House, sorry, they, it was stone. So they, they didn't, you know, the stone didn't burn. But what happened was that the, fire caught onto the interiors and the wooden frame and all the furnishings and everything collapsed inwards and some of the stone was weakened sufficiently to collapse and you were left with a ruin and um well local people thought ooh, ruin stone this great cotswold limestone and they basically used it as a free source of stone uh, it acted as a uh, kind of 17th century recycling if you want to call it that um, but the telltale signs are there from time to time in the fact that this golden stone when it's subjected to extreme heat it turns a pinky orange color and you can see examples of this at various places around the town none more so than this one directly across which is uh, the place i would generally go into in Camden for an afternoon tea, coffee and a cake. Built in 1693 this building was, but you can see towards the top of the building, above the sign there, there are two or three huge blocks of stone that are pinky orange in colour, several others as well. And uh, they are giving away the fact that when that house was built, they are, they were reusing some of the stone from the old mansion house that had been burned down so uh, yeah the bantam tea rooms is definitely a place i would recommend if you come to chipping camden they also have a couple of very nice uh, rooms as well it's a, it's a run as a small guest house as well and we've got a, a built we're standing in a building from 1627 we're looking at a building from 1693 and next to it a building from much later, 1870s, um, and this building was the local police station. County police station in the reign of Queen Victoria. Nowadays it houses a shop, it houses the local visitor information centre, and also various community rooms and organisations. There's a local community radio that's run there. Um, they have like a, a local community um, rural cinema where, where, they, um, where they get, you know, not the very latest films, but, you know, when they've 
reach the end of their runs in the bigger towns and cities, um, they go into the rural cinemas. So um, that police station being put to good use as well. So um, I think I'm going to end here because I'm dry. <laughs> Very selfish of me, I know. But I am dry. I can dry off my gimbal before I put it in my bag. Um, and hopefully I um, will then be able to, uh, to uh, make sure that no damage has occurred. So I want to say a huge thank you to all of you for joining me here this afternoon. I hope you've enjoyed a slightly different look at Chipping Camden. You know, I know we've seen the market hall before, we've seen the church before um, and the alms houses. But I really um, I hope you've enjoyed walking through some of the residential streets and just seeing a little bit more about what what the town is like perhaps and more as a as a place to live as well as just as a place to visit um, and, and I thought that would might make kind of a nice change as I as I used Chipping Camden as the first of my sponsored Cotswolds tours so um, if you've enjoyed this um, and want to contribute to future sponsored tours um, I do have a um, I've got one up at the moment, which is for Lincoln, um, which is uh, getting close to being uh, fully funded. Uh, I'm going to put another one, another Cotswolds one up, um, because when that's fully funded, then we can do another Cotswold tour. And next time I will definitely do a new Cotswold place. Uh, I don't want to, I, I won't tell you where yet, because I haven't decided, <laughs> but it'll be a place we've not done before. Uh, and I'll put up another, um, Another sponsored one as well, I think might do um, another, maybe another one of the big city tours. So if you want to contribute to those, whatever amount you feel, um, thank you Claire for putting the link up to the wish list page of Buy Me A Coffee. Um, quite a bit coming up this week uh, and you can find links for all of this week's tours on um, the Padlet page. Um, uh, on the Padlet page you'll find links to all of the tours whether they're free to join live stream tours whether they're tours you need to book for thank you again Claire for putting the links up to those uh, tonight if you've not had enough of my voice for today tonight um, we are going to be uh, actually uh, couldn't almost couldn't be more of a contrast I suppose um, we're going to be going from a place that was the centre of medieval wealth and prosperity to a place that was the centre of wealth and prosperity on a global scale in the 18th and 19th centuries. Um, we're going to be in Liverpool for, uh, it's an As Live tour, I don't have to jump in my car and drive up there. Um, it's going to be concentrating on the commercial and dock areas of Liverpool. Absolutely amazing architecture, loads of um, fascinating history there surrounding that part of the city. So that's at nine o'clock UK time, which is in four and a half hours from now, wherever, so whatever time it is where you are, four and a half hours time. Uh, and go to the Padlet page, you can find the links to book the tickets for that. If you can't make it tonight, um, you can uh, watch it as a catch up, it'll be recorded and uh, you can just book your ticket and, and let me know you want a catch up or you can just wait until tomorrow and then you can just book directly for the, the catch up version when, once it's on YouTube. So um, what else have I got this week? Uh, Thursday I have a tour in Birmingham. Uh, and considering it's the place I live we've not been there for a long time and I think now they've finished the I don't know whether it was construction work, renovation work, whatever they were doing for most of last year on one or two of the main squares. It's now finished. So it's a high time we had another stroll around the centre of Birmingham and we're going to do that on Thursday afternoon. So, um, and just as a little teaser as well, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, I had an extra day, an ex unexpected extra day in Berlin after the end of my tour. Well, I used it wisely. I didn't just sit around in the hotel and I didn't just go and drink coffee and eat sausages. I went out and I recorded three tours. And we have three new, brand new tours of Berlin, um, all recorded, ready to do as live. Uh, one of them is going to be um, all about the history of the Nazi period and the Holocaust 
Um, one of them is a walk from the Brandenburg Gate to the old um, German Imperial Royal Palace. Uh, and the other one is um, uh, more of an exploration of a part of the eastern part of Berlin, uh, where all of the, the museums and those kinds of things are. Um, so three tours recorded and um, so the first of those is probably going to be um, on a Sunday evening in a couple of weeks time when I get back from my trip to Munich next week. So um, we, that's just a little teaser, it's not on the schedule yet but they will be up, uh, at least one of those will be up in the next couple of days for you. So thank you again for joining me this afternoon, have a lovely rest of your Sunday everybody and um, I will see you maybe tonight for the Liverpool tour or if not hopefully in the week and very soon. Thank you so much everyone, bye for now.